pervasive Rush Analyzer makes it easy for business analysts and data scientists to create and run big data analytics. Analysts can quickly cleanse, profile, and aggregate data from multiple sources. Data scientists can mine the data to uncover valuable intelligence. In this demo, we'll prepare and analyze point-of-sale data. First, we'll read the data, which is in flat files. We double-click on Delimited Text Reader, and it appears on the canvas. We rename it, calling it Line Items, and then we configure it, entering the file name and delimiters and other characteristics of the file. Once we enter the file name, you'll see that it displays the columns, and each column can have a type, like integer or string. Now, in our example, the point-of-sale data is in three tables, line items, orders, and customers. A customer places one or more orders, and each order has one or more line items. So we'll need three readers, one for each table. Once we draw and configure all three readers, we'll do some data cleansing and then enrich the point-of-sale data with catalog and geographical data. And finally, we'll run market basket analysis to see which items are purchased together. Now, Rush Analyzer can read and write from multiple data sources in the same application. Here, we're reading flat files, but we also have readers and writers for relational databases and HBase, a NoSQL database. And we can read and write files in the Hadoop distributed file system. After we've designed our big data app using Rush Analyzer, we'll run it. Rush Analyzer uses the DataRush parallel data flow engine to get top speed on commodity servers. DataRush leverages multi-core servers, automatically scaling to take advantage of all the available cores. Now we'll do data cleansing on the line items, filling in missing values. We add the missing value operator by double-clicking it on the left menu. It can catch missing values in a couple of ways, first by type. So here we'll configure it so that if any column of type double is missing a value, it'll be replaced with a constant of 0.0. .0 and any column of type integer that's missing a value will be set to zero. It can also single out specific columns, regardless of type. So here we'll say that if the quantity column is missing a value, it should be set to one, quantity one, rather than zero. Rush Analyzer's aggregation functions include joins and groups. The join operation joins two input streams by the specified key fields. It supports inner and outer joins. First, we'll join line items to orders. We add the join operator by double-clicking on join in the menu on the left. We connect its second input to orders data stream, and we rename it, calling it add orders. We'll configure it to do an inner join using the order key on both the right and left sides. Next, we join customer data to orders and line items. We add another join operator, connect its second input to the customer's data stream, and give it the name add customers. Then we'll configure it to do an inner join, and in this case, we'll use the key called cust key on the right and left sides. Now that we've cleaned and joined all our point of sale data, we'll now do some aggregations. And for this, we'll use the group operator. It aggregates data using groups that you specify. It can compute average, count, minimum, maximum, standard deviation, and more. In our example, our marketing group wants to review sales broken down in dollars and units for each market segment, so we aggregate on the market segment column. Then we bring up the configuration and choose what to aggregate. We want a total count of the number of orders using order key and the sum and average of the extended price field, so we pick those using the drop-downs. We'll do the same for the quantity field. First, we compute the sum of quantity per segment and then the average of the quantity. Now we'll write out the result to a flat file. We could also add visualizations to display the data from within Rush Analyzer, but here we'll write it out to a CSV file. We'll add a delimited text file writer by clicking on the menu. We'll give it a descriptive name, calling it Market Segments. Then we'll bring up the configuration box and configure the file name to write out, called MarketSegments.csv. Here we can also specify properties, like whether we want to write a header line first. Later, we'll do some other aggregations. And to do those, we'll reuse this group by and file writer operator that we just put down on the canvas, copying and paste them. Now we'll complete the data preparation part before we move on to the analytics. We'll enrich the data and aggregate by brand and by geography. Since you've already seen how a lot of these operations are done, we'll speed up the video for this part. First, we read the parts catalog and join it to the transactional data by using the part key. We'll put down a join operator and set it up to use the part key. 
This adds in brand information, so now we can aggregate by brand. To do the aggregation, we'll copy and paste the group and the text writer that we did earlier and change the group aggregation key from market segment to brand, and we change the file name we write out to brands.csv. Now we'll add in geographic data from two different tables, countries and regions. We'll join the country and region tables using the region key. Then we'll join the result to the point of sale data enriched with the parts list. Now we'll group the sales figures by country and by region, and for that we copy-paste the group and output operators we used earlier. We rename them all, and then we configure the join to use the nation key. We configure the first group operator to use the nation name field, and the second one to use the region name field, so we aggregate along those two. And we change the output names on the readers and the writers. In a matter of minutes, we've defined how we'll cleanse and aggregate our data. Now let's add analytics doing market basket analysis. This will tell us which products people purchase together. If we discover, as legend has it, that people tend to purchase beer and diapers together, we might place them together in a store, or on an e-commerce site, recommend one when someone adds the other to their cart. From the menu, we'll use the frequent pattern growth, or FP growth operator. This mines all the orders for frequent item sets and association rules, and it builds a model. We'll then write the model out to a file using the industry standard Predictive Model Markup Language, or PMML. We'll rename the operator's name to Market Basket. And to configure it, we'll tell it how to identify which items are in the same order, which is by order key, and how to identify the objects by their part name. Then we'll change the file writer operator's name to Model, and we'll tell it what file to write out to, called MarketBasket.PMML. In addition to FP growth, Pervasive Rush Analyzer has analytics functions for classifiers, clustering, feature selection, and regression. And with an extensible API, users can add new ones. Now that we've built the app, it's time to run it. When we press the Run button, Rush Analyzer builds a data flow graph using DataRush and then runs it. And in no time, it's consumed hundreds of thousands of rows of data, cleaning, prepping, and analyzing. To find out how Pervasive Rush Analyzer can help you solve your big data challenges, go to pervasivebigdata.com.